All right, welcome back to Let's Learn Fighting Games. It's time. It is Tekken 7 time. I'm here with my man Sammy Fish How's and my going? man Gallo. Uh, these guys are SoCal vets in this game. Um, these, they're going to teach us how to play some Tekken 7. So, um, you know, I know we're already at the character select screen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to ask each of you independently. Mm -hmm. When you first played your Tekken. Yes. What was your first character like? What character, actually, wh what what character made you like really interested in this game? And how do you even pick this character? Like, what made you gravitate to that character? Go ahead, sure. Uh, first character I played was Leo. Uh, Leo I picked because she is a character that practices Bajikwan, which is one of my favorite styles of martial arts, which is all about like core strength, heavy hits, like shoulder moves and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. Uh, and the second reason is that actually East Coast player Bloodhawk is one of my uh, closest friends. He's ah, one of the people okay. who taught me how to play Tekken 7. And uh, he is a huge Leo player. He's one of the best Leo players in the United States. Nice. And nice, so nice. Uh, in 2015, when uh, when I met him at EVO, he was we talked and he told me about this character. And I was like, this is exactly my character. Yep. As soon as the game comes out on console, this character is mine. And that, yeah, that's how it started. Gallo? Uh, well, basically, I've been playing Tekken. Oh, sorry. It's cool, cool. Basically, I've been playing Tekken my whole life. So, yeah. um, I've always had like uh, favorites because of it. So when I first started competing, which was in Tekken Six, uh, I already had a favorite, which was Julia. Julia. Yeah. Yes. I gravitated towards that character because I really like like Native American stuff. So it was mostly aesthetic uh, reasons for me, as far as uh, picking up a character. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know. I've played, okay, so Tekken 1 it was a game that, at least in the States, not a lot of us played the arcade version. Right. Tekken mm -hmm. 2, I think at the end of its life, uh, uh, at the end of its life, where meaning where it came out for consoles, mm. is where it started to pick up traction. And then Tekken 3, for at least for me, is when I first like really got into the competitive mm. about it. and. Uh, a, a, a cool story I always like to share about this game is that uh, th this was a time where, like, I was in all about my prime in, like, the Street Fighters, the, the early Marvels, and just whatever crossover game. And then behind us was Tekken 3. And I always see this, like, big dude would play Jin, and he would do these crazy combos and launches and and uh, just made the game look really, like, really dope. And yeah. then I, I, I went up to him, I'm like, hey man, like, I didn't even know you can do these things. He goes, oh yeah, there's a bunch of juggles with like many characters um, that I'm doing for this. My, uh, I'm actually gonna record these combos for you. Are you gonna record them? Like, yeah, you're gonna record them. And he taught me some, and this guy happens to own, this guy was the founder of Tekken Zaibatsu, it was Vic <laughs> Stair, wow. Castell. Castell, yeah. Castell. And he used to play at Southern Hills Golf Land with us, right? And uh, man, like because of his like just just him doing combos, right. just got me like you know what? I'm gonna learn that, and uh, I'm gonna. And even before playing Tekken Three, I looked at like Kazuya, and he kind of looked like Ryu, and I'm like, this gotta be the show of the game, right? I, I I can do that, right? Yeah. But no, it was nothing like that. You <laughs> have to learn like. Electric office and stuff like that. So by the time I went to Tekken Three, that's where I like really explored and learned this stuff. So mm -hmm. the Mish Mishimas were the ones that uh, I, I gravitated to. So Kazuya was my favorite character. Yeah, had to learn Jin and of course Heihachi and uh, Law. And so that's that's how I started and then w eventually went on to King um, and then learned the rest of the cast. So now with Tekken Seven. You're a Leo guy, mm -hmm. and let, uh, go ahead and pick Leo. Sure. And then go pick your favorite character here. You get Julia. Julia. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me log in, I guess. Yeah. Right. Cool. Okay. So this is a training stage uh, I pick. Yeah. It's it's it looks like a training stage, and all the squares on the bottom are are two units. Square units across. So this stage is uh, 24 by 24 square, mm. and every big square on the bottom is two units. So you can measure how far your uh, your combos go because going obviously uh, going getting to the wall or carrying to the wall is a big deal in this game. Yeah. So even okay before we start, this is a four button game. Indeed, it is. Yeah. This yes. is only a four button game. However, uh, 
with a certain input, either of its. You want to start? Uh, if you push towards, down. Damn, where's the start button on this thing? Uh, oh, top right. Ah, there it is. Yeah. yeah. So. Wait, does Tekken use numpad notation? It does. Mm -hmm. Everything uses numpad notation. So, well, it, not ah. in the states. In, 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 in Asian countries, they use numpad. Should I keep uh, that? Yeah, numpad. Should I keep yes. the visual aid up then? It's fine. No, you can. You can. Yeah. Okay, so, don't. so Tekken has one, two, three, four. One is left punch. Two is right punch. Three is left kick. Four is right kick. That's right. Yes. Right. And uh, however, this game has a hundred plus moves for each character. Some have seventy or eighty, whatever. But a lot of them have a hundred plus moves. Yeah. And you do not need to learn them all. You, no. there, there are some key key moves to each character that can prepare you for each match. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, it's, it, in, in the older Tekkens, maybe you only need five or six moves. Right. Honestly, it was just really bare bones. There's like 100 moves still back then, but right. they were very easily counterable. Or they're very repetitive where they're really unsafe. This, I mean, they have that just to appease people that are just going to be button mashing. But uh, they, uh, I think Bandai Namco did a really good job in now y using the strengths of strings to have cancels and have like a certain, um, you can do ha half of the string into something. Um, you couldn't before. If you try to do that, you were super negative. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you have to build some of your offense around this. So now I'm gonna actually, from my old lore yeah. to the current lore of, of gameplay, how, Sammy Fish, how do you approach a match uh, with, with, with your, your main character? I approach like a match like a like a, in a tournament or? Yeah, just, uh, you, 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 like you want to get the win, bro. Okay. You want to get the win, how, what, how do you approach a match? So let's say with Leo. Leo's a, a very, very strong character. Yep. She's got a lot of very strong mids and she has one of the farthest reaching down four twos in a game. When I say that, I usually refer to a launching mid. Like that, yeah, right? because so, um, the, the game you can get hit by lows, mediums, or highs, right. right? And obviously the low and the mids are the ones that are crucial because you can get launched or you can get swept. Yes. So, as you were saying, yeah. So she's what, the reason why I say that I, I go to the stage is because yep. one of the best things about this character is wall carry. She has some of the best wall carry in the game. So what I do is I've uh, made a game plan based around taking people to the wall and then mixing them up over and over again because she has very good wall pressure. She has a lot of ways yep. to wall splat you pretty safely. And uh, she has a lot of really good m ways to sort of constantly make you scared in that scenario. So I, I've carried a, a simple game plan and I started with that. And, and so one of the ways that I play around her is that I try to play our, next to the walls or try to get people to the walls. So yeah, so how do you, how do you like emphasize your pokes into leading them on into like a, a, a wall pushing move. Right, so one of the cool things is that uh, a lot of these moves in Tekken are very generic. So uh, things like jab, every jab, uh, almost every jab in the game is about plus one. Almost every down forward one is a 13 frame safe mid that you can use. So a lot of these things you can use in order for you to sort of facilitate your gameplay, right? Yep. Um, you can do things like do a jab and then maybe do a down forward one after. How do they react? What do they do, right? Uh, very simply enough, you're safe enough to go back dash right here. Let's say they put a button there, that's room for a down forward too. Yep. Or maybe uh, you do a jab and then they sort of respond by them back dashing. Well, maybe you can sort of put a safe mid and try to catch them moving backwards. Yeah, the, 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 the one tedious thing about 3D games in general is now you have to understand frame data. And frame data is extremely Super important yep. because in, in like 2D traditional games, people can whiff a lot of buttons. And even on block, you're relatively safe still mm -hmm. in the majority of the buttons. Obviously, the slow buttons and the buttons that do devastating damage, they're obviously punishable. In this game, you cannot tell by eyesight. You cannot. Uh, certain jabs uh, are... I think the fastest is what? The fastest is 10? Is yes. That, uh, generically, generically, everybody's 10-frame er, jab. It's a 10-frame jab, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, what does that mean? That means, like, that when that move comes out, if anybody, if somebody does an 11-frame move at the same time, the 10 is going to win. Yes, uh, of uh, if it's at the same height, because there's, there's intricacies behind it, because somebody can do a low sweep, and it's going to be a high crush move. Which we'll get we'll get into that later. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff that we cannot cover in in this 30 minutes. It's so hard. Yeah. It's, it's hard. But at least at this point, all we're gonna do is 
we're gonna teach you what the the general game plan of just say you picking up the game, mm -hmm. seeing somebody that has uh, some time with it, and then go from there. Okay, so you want to show us a little bit of your corner pressure, right? So we're here on the wall, right? Yep. One of the cool things is that Leo has a lot of really good tools in this area because she has really nice far-reaching buttons. Things mm -hmm. like this, or you have uh, down forward three, there you go. She has a lot of ways to sort of press you on the wall and kind of, kind of keep you at this range, right? That's a low, that's really nice to pick out here. And then you can look for things that are a little bit scarier, like do this. Yep. This leaves you plus so that you can do mix-ups or you can stay here and stay on the ground. So then you're starting to create sort of a um, a blender, let's yep. say, right? So this is she excels at this a lot. She has a lot of moves that sort of do this from range, and she has a lot of moves that sort of get people to get scared in this situation. Yeah. So um, when when you are starting on this game, just do a lot of lows because it pisses people off. It really does. If you like, even go up and, and push a down, uh, a crouching. Four, like just a normal like kick to the shin or something. Yeah. People are gonna like if they're trying to move away, but they get keep, keep getting hit by that. Sooner or later, they're gonna start crouching. That's like the basis of opening somebody up when you know that they're gonna crouch next time. And when they do crouch next time, then the party happens. You can do a medium hit, a launcher, mm -hmm. um, something that staggers you pretty bad, or some kind of a wall like push. And so, like, go ahead, go ahead and crouch and then show a demonstrate because sure. now he say the scenario is Leo uh, hits Julia so many times on the ground and Gallo's all like, all right, forget this, I'm crouching. Now what? Yeah. Uh, by the wall, what so, are you gonna do? So one of the thi one of the cool things about Tekken is that there's different block animations that will yep. teach you how to how to block in certain situations. So if I block something like a, a down four, she, he can only get a wall standing four out of this, all right? So, yep. But if he I'm does, punish, yep. I'm punished, right? But if I do something a little bit riskier, my leg will get stuck like that, yep. and that indicates that you can probably go for a bigger launch than the normal. Yep. So well, how now that she's crouched, take advantage you, of how yeah the fact that you conditioned someone to crouch at yep. this point. Yep. So what would you do now if you knew that they were gonna crouch four so four two? Yeah. Now that I know they're gonna they're gonna crouch, I can do things like four four two. This oh, gives and me a, a wall. Nice, and you yep. get a, he gets a wall splat. Causing a wall splat is definitely the the thing you gotta remember in this game. I feel because if you're in a wall stage, you gotta know which moves cause a wall splat uh, because that's the only way you're gonna really take advantage of the of the wall behind the opponent. Because a wall splat means the character gets stuck to the wall for a short amount of time, allowing you to get a essentially what we call a wall combo, right? So that's always gonna be the the key uh, that you need. And most moves that are mid. That knockdown will wall splat. Yes, you know. So you can crash for me again. This is why I was going to this. That's a safe move yep. that is really good to use in this situation. You can always do this, which is easy to see. It's a hit confirmable hit mid mid string. Mid -mid. It's a hit really, confirm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's my It's really goodness. cheap. It's really cheap. Yeah. yeah. So if you hit confirm, if you see the first hit hit, yes. follow up. If you yes. don't see it hit or it's blocked, don't follow it up. And yeah. the the problem with that move too, which makes it really tricky, is the fact that. Not only is it hit confirmable, but it's punishable. So a lot of the times, if you only do the first hit, the opponent's going to stay standing because it's a delayable string as well in yeah. order to punish it on block. And at that point, you're probably going to get sweeped because ah. the the player doing the down back two will now say, well, you're not going to block low because you're waiting for that mid to come. Yep. Here's here's the sweet mix up now. And now <laughs> you're on the floor. Now yeah. you're eating ish party because time. it's party time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so then she also has a transition out of this, which is really scary. You can hold crouch, and now you can uh, right. go into her, one of her stances. And then you can start putting mix-ups from here. Or you can hold crouch and then go low. Yeah. So there's, there's a crazy mix-up game with this character. Now, now flip sides, mm. Gallo, Julia is your favorite. So right. what's your general game plan with Julia? Well, against the wall, Julia is really uh, a beast, honestly. Well, because be even before the wall, because it's going to take you work to get there, so let's go right. middle of the oh, screen. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you're, you're trying to ask me how do I approach matches? Yep. How do you approach that? Yeah. Okay. Generally, when I approach a match, I think about my opponent's character first. I don't even think about what I'm going to do yet. Mm. The way I look at, it, at every match is individual, right? So I look at the opponent's character first. I think Leo, right? What are Leo's top 10 moves? 
right? Give me the, give me the top 10 moves. I, I'll keep them in my head. So that way I'm ready to um, react when I see them. And I know Leo's top 10 moves, right? I'm already thinking these are the moves I I'm going to see from this opponent. So I'm ready to react whenever they do those, uh, those key moves. Or I'm ready to avoid those key moves uh, before the match starts. Because if you're trying to react to everything, y you're not going to be able to. No. It's a lot easier to react to something if you, in a way, know it's coming. Anticipation. If you're anticipating, yep. right? So I anticipate all of those moves. In my head, that's what I'm thinking about. You know, I'm thinking about what's the common uh, Leo game plan and how am I going to approach that and what moves do I have to have in my arsenal to uh, beat this player. So that's how I approach my, my matches. Yep. Also, um, I also gauge knowledge. How much does this player know about the game, my character, and his character? So, you know, I think about all these things when I approach a match because otherwise, um, you're gonna have a difficult time. If you if you cannot gauge that your opponent has less knowledge than you, you might have a difficult time beating oh, yeah. them. Yep. If you can gauge that they don't know a thing or two, now you can abuse certain moves or yep. certain scenarios, certain situations. If they don't know that one move is minus 15 and they don't launch you at all, that move is now free. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You can use it all day. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm kind of like, that scumbag dude who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who will snake edge you because you can't see it. Right. That's how I approach matches. Sure, I gauge your, your ability to see those moves. Should you block it, I might stop doing it or I might set it up next time, you know? That's kind of how, uh, how I approach matches yeah. in this game. Yeah, it's uh, knowledge is power in, in, in 3D games. Yes. Uh, especially Tekken, is a, it, it's very high frame advantage knowledge or frame knowledge. Yes. Uh, however, you can also use use uh, you can use baits in that in the same way too. One of my right. old strategies was just allow them to think that I don't know what it is. Right. Yes. And, yes, and yes. then set them up later. Right. So let I, let them use it later so you can kill them for so it. So you yeah. can kill them for yes. it. Yes. Right. So that was my unorthodox approach to many fighting games. Right. Uh, until like. The games did too much damage that I couldn't. I couldn't do that no <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, so but um, no, that's that's a really great insight uh, from both of you. Um, now it, it's these these characters have so many moves. Um, why don't you show some of uh, Julia's best moves um, that really kind of uh, make the le the uh, the opponents kind of watch out for? Right. Okay. So Julia's really interesting because she has a wide variety of moves mm -hmm. and she's also extremely punishable but does a lot of damage at the same time so well, i'm going to just start with her key moves obviously everybody knows about party crasher right her yeah, number go. one attack ever since she was released she's always had this attack forward forward one it's party crasher it's a uh, 12 frame mid if executed properly at, at the fastest right 12 frame mid uh, a lot of characters don't even have that option. A 12 frame mid, a lot of characters start their mids at 13 frames. Mm -hmm. This is already a, a really strong attack to to have. Um, not only that, it's only minus two on block and it's plus two on, on hit um, as far as frames go. So the opponent doesn't really have too many options after blocking this because you're almost even in frames, right? A along with the fact that it has an extension that can counter hit them should they try to do something dumb. And if they do get counter hit, uh, then you get a full combo, right? Mm. So that's one of her strongest moves. Um, it, it definitely puts fear into the opponent because they think, well, what's coming next? Is the extension coming next? Do I want to duck and get, or do I want to attack and get counter hit like the way uh, he just did now? Yep. You know, stuff like that. Th that that's her primary offense is going to definitely be uh, Party Crasher. It pushes back. It, it carries far. There's an extension to it. And it's only minus two, so I can move immediately after. I can do a crush attack immediately after. Ooh, like, you know, yeah. I can do so many things with this one attack. So obviously this is going to be the attack most Julia players are going to be using because it puts her in that sort of uh, situation and makes the opponent think twice about attacking right, right away. Minus two means nothing in, in this game. That you're practically even. You may as well be at zero. Yep. So um, that's one of her, her, her greatest moves. Along with, uh, she beats Crouchers really f hard because she has this move, uh, down forward one. It's plus 14 on, on opponents who crouch, which means she gets guaranteed attacks. 
afterwards. Yeah. Ooh, okay. You know what I mean? You, yeah, yeah. Like, you're not able to block certain attacks uh, afterwards because now she can do anything that's 14 frames and under uh, to hurt you. Mm. So, and that's what, 30% just because you crouched once? So. <laughs> It's uh, crazy, man. Uh, yeah, it's a really it, ugly, devastating attack. So, so, like, the reason why it's crazy is usually uh, moves that are mid are either safe with low reward or risky with high reward. Yes. So, like, let's say if he if uh, he's crouching, if I want to blow him up for a mid, I go something for, like, a hop kick, which is uh, punishable on block. But she has a move that is not only safe on block, but also gives her crazy reward yeah. on hit. So, yeah, this move is safe. It's safe? Uh, yeah, so you're able to just spam it. It doesn't really matter what... Like you just yes. throw it out. The only problem is you got to be in their face, and you better hope uh, they're crouching. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Well, if they're standing, is, does it whiff or something? Or no. If they're standing, he can just block it, and oh, I'm safe anyway. Oh, okay. So. Oh okay. But the well, thing I, is, I don't, it's not punishable. Yeah, it's not punishable. I, uh, I don't win, nor do I lose. We're got it. Yeah, and yeah. it's only what minus five. Minus five. I can five. still get away from him anyway. Yeah. I, I can back dash. I can move because at minus five, you're still able to move. So right. like, if he does a down forward one, and I try to jab check afterwards, he's out of the oh, way. Oh yeah. Yep. So yeah. I'm not even guaranteed to take my turn back. Yeah. Mm. So another one. That's one. Another one of her crucial moves. Another one of her big moves is her shotgun. So down to down forward one. This move is is really good because it's a 13 frame mid. The startup is uh, 13 frames, right? But it just stay there. Yeah. Like it's a really long range mid. You can. This is like range three right here, and it hits. You can be all the way over here. Oops. And use this move. Not only that, she can wind roll. And then the wind roll can go into mix-ups. On hit, there's really nothing you can do about it. On block, she's negative. You can go ahead and attack. But if you think you can attack this move because she's negative, you're wrong because she has an extension. So now you're, you're getting mixed up over and over and over because you're thinking, well, I don't want to attack. I might get counter hit by the second hit. Mm, you right. know? So that's another one of her, her greatest moves. I do want to bring up something real quick that you that you brought up. So one of the things is, uh, in second notation, what we talk about is we talk about zero, one, two, three distance oh, uh, uh, ranges, in, yes. in, in ranges. ranges in this game. So what we do is that we talk about that in the sense of backdash ranges. So this is character, uh, character backdash ranges away, right? Yeah. So this is a zero range. This is yeah. what we call when we say in, uh, face a move face, a zero is range. good in zero range, we talk about here. When we do one backdash away, this is about one range, two range, three range. Yeah. Right? So in the sense of like when we talk about like, oh, this is a good two range move, and I'm right here, I'd be talking about something like, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. forward forward two, right? Yeah. But if a move uh, that's maybe good in one range is a down forward one, it's not good in a two range right here. So that's what we're talking about when we say ranges with a number on them. Yep. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, basically think about it as like character spaces. One character space, two character space, three character space, right? Yes. So yep. just depends on how many character spaces away the opponent is. That's how you gauge your range. Yep. So, and, yeah. And then and uh, this game does have throws, of course. Yes. Um, you know, generic one plus three, two plus four. Um, and you can you can escape it with one button now. Uh, yes. Versus the generic throw. The generic throw. Mm -hmm. So um, demonstrate that and demonstrate what's new about it too as far as like uh, one plus twos and uh so the funny thing yeah. about that is that it really confuses people because even though you are able to break generic throws with any button it's still it's still a quote-unquote mix-up because even though the generic throws can be broken because a lot of people tend to not practice throw bakes due to that though it makes one plus two throws a lot stronger yep so it's it's funny because now that now that uh, one plus two throws can are the only ones that can be broken with the input, right? Uh, as opposed to command throws who, can, who need the right input to break as well. Uh, a lot of people tend to always break one plus two now, which is an issue, right? So every time you do a regular throw on them, they won't break it because they're breaking one plus two every time because yeah. just about every character only has a one plus two command throw, which has to be broken forced did, by one did plus two. Did people get lazy at looking people at the get, arms? Yes. When it comes to seven, yes. Uh. Before... Oh, Every you no. had to break by arm. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. So this one it, that's still in the game. Can, only, can you know, I chime only in? Command throws. Can I yes. chime in yeah, real yeah. quick? I hated arm grab breaking in Tekken Six. Uh, it's really hard. I could not it's read really arms. Y you know, there, it's a lot more leaning in this game. So, I could not read arms. Yeah. So one of the things you could do, though, however, to make your life easy, as a Tekken Seven baby myself, uh, I did a you do a lot of knowledge learning and, and try to learn what character what uh, throws 
characters have. So Leo, as a character, is not a very good throw character because she only has two throws, or two sets of throws that are breakable. She has her generic throws, which is just Ooh. this one, and she has this one, right? The only other throw that she has is her forward forward one plus two throw, which yes. is her one plus two throw. So when you think about it in her head, if you could, or in your head, if you want to learn how to break throws, you either have to break either one plus two or only or, one or, or two. Random punch button. Yeah. Yes. So there's not much of a mix up there. Also, you can sort yeah. of look and, at and it. That, and that hinders characters sometimes because that specific throw that Leo has is actually a wall splatting throw. It's great. What a so great throw. So <laughs> now, yeah. that, now that you, you know that, you're you're like near the wall and you're you're thinking to yourself, oh, oh this Leo's throwing me. I'm just gonna break one plus two yep. every time because you don't I'm not, I don't want to eat you, that. You don't eat that. Yeah. And then uh, as far as uh, side throws, is that still? Yes, it's still a thing, and you still have to break side throws uh, accordingly. Accordingly. Okay. So demonstrate. If you go onto the player's right side, you have to escape with two. That if wasn't a side throw, by the way. No, yeah. Side yeah. Throw. We'll, we'll get on the open <laughs> here. Go, go and go do the side throw. So side throws. The so you're way going to his left side, yes. Yes. So the way side throws work is you go to the, the side of the character, and you throw them right. And this is a specific animation. That's a side throw. Yep. The only way to break that throw is to break with the arm of the side you were thrown with. Exactly. Which is your left arm. So I can do a two throw, and if and you can see my right arm come out, and anybody with a throw reaction, with standard throw reactions, would break two. But you're on their left side. Mm -hmm. They hit two, and they get thrown. Why? Because they're looking at your arm They're looking still. at the arm, yeah. They're not looking at the fact that you're on their side, yeah. which is a really big like uh, mix-up in a way because it's so annoying to have that reaction of looking at the arm. And looking at the arm, But yeah. then forgetting positioning. So it's that, that's the most annoying thing about side throws. Yep. And, yeah, there's still a thing. And you have to break with your... Uh, the appropriate arm of the side that you're being thrown on. And can you can you break back throws now? No, you cannot. Okay, you still can't. Okay. No. Back throws <laughs> are still Actually, guaranteed. do Julia's back throw. Julia's back throw is way cooler. Uh, yeah, Julia... Uh, and oh, I'm sorry, not just Julia, but all characters have back throws, obviously, which yeah. are standard. Um, so yeah. they cannot be broken. <laughs> and it's funny right, because right. Uh, back throws are kind of nerfed in this game. Uh, because they don't do as much. They don't damage. do as much damage as they used to. Yeah. They used to do like half life. Yeah, yeah, they did. So now they just do like I don't know what is it like standard throw now. damage. Maybe like ten points more, yeah, five yeah. points I more. I think it does fifty damage if I recall correctly. Now, um, two more things I want to cover real quick. Oh, that's side throw. One, one is juggle the, the the bound that they have in this game, and then the last is the the supers that they have. Oh, and the, the ray drive. Okay, uh, you could turn it on. Rage rage drives. Drives. Yes. Or turn on Rage. So, yeah, Rage is a mechanic in, uh, introduced in 6, I recall correctly. Rage was introduced in 6. Yeah. Yes. It was introduced in 6, but works differently in Tekken 7. So in Tekken 7, you see that there is a slightly uh, different colored health uh, on your bar on towards the top. The end, yes. Yeah, towards the end. Once you reach that color, you're in Rage state, and that means you have access to a Rage Drive, which is a special move or a Rage Art, which is like a super move that has armor, yes. right? So hers, or Leo's, is a 4 4 one plus 2. Or, uh, what's it called? You gotta be not near them, but... Yep. Yeah, or 4 4 2 hold, right? So it's just an empowered version of this move. Right? Yeah, this that, is, that uh, so the benefits to using this is that one, it does more damage, and two, it's safe. This is normally ne a negative 10 move. But when I use this one, or this two, then I get to use a safe move that pushes them so, back. So what? Uh, when you hit them with that, is it the same type of hit, or does it launch, or does it stagger? What it does, does it a, a, a long range wall splat. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. So you get additional hits essentially okay. instead of just a knockdown. And then what does Julia get? When she does uh, her rage it's ride? the same thing as. Oh, so they, got, they got the same one? Yeah. Well, not the same move. Oh, okay. But the same style of uh, rage drive. Oh, yes. right, right, right. So yeah, basically, when you go into rage, you get a damage buff. You get. Ra the access to Rage Drive or Rage Art. You don't get both. Yep. You get one or the other. And um, on top of that, uh, you become a lot more scarier. Think about it. You got a damage buff, and now you have two additional comeback mechanics. So it's really funny because a lot of people don't think about this, but when you put somebody in Rage, you're allowing them to 
have a chance at coming back. Yes. And it's funny because in Tekken 6, when Rage was introduced, people would always put the opponent in Rage and then end up losing the round yeah. or the match or whatever. And, it, and then it became a thing to where you had to drop your combo before the opponent hits Rage. That's a strategy. You, you, let's say you're about to put the opponent in Rage. Drop the combo. Yep. Why? Because you don't want to give them that a attack buff. You don't want to give them those two comeback options. And then all you have to do is hit them like one big move maybe, or a few quick pokes. Yep. To, or to launch them and kill them right away. Yep. Yep. To so prevent so. him from getting into Rage. Yes. So, um, so can you also show from each side a... Uh, bread and butter combo and a, and a bread and butter combo with the rage art. I was just showing the difference between the damage. Yeah, uh, because in rage, she gets uh, three more damage on the move. It becomes a little bit scarier to go for. Yeah. Or so, so what's your bread and butter? So my bread and butter with this character is usually just something like this. So yeah, when they twirl like that, um, it, they put them in a an extended juggle state where yes. you can pick them up off the ground. Um, and another another attack, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's great. Uh, so the the universal mechanic for this game is is screw, which allows you to extend your combos at different points in the in the combo. Mm -hmm. So can you walk forward for me again? Like, so it's great because you can. Oh, sorry. You can go for a long combo like this, add the screw in the end, and then you can finish up the combo later. So it sort of normalizes the combo in a lot of ways. And then put one with your rage art. My rage art? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. So, uh, what's it called? Just uh, walk forward for me again. Usually, screws are very easy to put in after Rage Arts. You might have to do a little micro dash forward, oh. but generally you can do screw in the Rage Art on almost any character in the game. Yeah, for the most part. All right, well, Julia, what you got? Julia, uh, let's see. A lot of her staples oops, sorry, would be consist of her uh, shock and spin attack into, oh, okay. uh, to finish her. But most of her most important thing is her ability to do a wall carry like that, mm. and then get meaty damage at the wall, nice. strong damage at the wall. Yeah. And then one with uh, rage art. Sure. Here I come. So oh, again, yeah. like he said before, a lot of times when you use your rage art in the combo, you want to use it after the screw attack, just to tack on that little bit of damage there at the end. Um, <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, I know. I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they made this <laughs> What do you character. mean? She's Julia's no. great. She's a streamer. She's great. I love Julia. She's a great character. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you can you can really make this or uh, make combos hurt just a little bit more because they have minimum scaling. I might have missed that one, but yeah. But it, it does make it it does make it a little bit more scary to. Use uh, what's it called? Use your rage art at the end of combos because it makes it hurt a, a lot more. Every yeah. com every rage art has minimum scaling, so yeah. that means that even after a screw, if you can only get like maybe five or six damage after your screw combo, you can tack on the rage art at the end and hopefully be able to finish them off. Okay, so we went through general strategy, went through um, some of the basics, some combos, uh, some fun tidbits with your characters. I think we're ready to see a match. You want to see that? Yeah, I want to oh see it. Oh, boy. Uh, Alrighty. I want to see this. Let's see it. <laughs> I want to see it. I did not expect this. Yeah. They're not prepared. Mentally. 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 You got to always Why is treating us like this is the wild? And you just... <laughs> the panther and the hyena find each other around a tree. They're just going to start scrapping. Welcome to the king of Don't worry. You'll see the VOD, and then you'll see where, where you did oh right and wrong. Oh, boy. There you go. That'll be fun. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I haven't unlocked a lot of stuff from it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all right. I always check just in case. Yeah, man. Just in case somebody thought they they they're being sneaky and hiding their bathing suit costume there. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You always hide it between six or seven, so you don't you accidentally go backwards. You put it in slot ten. Yeah, you put it in slot ten yeah. or something. So nobody can see it. <laughs> yeah. I know the degenerate strats. I've seen. Yeah, I I've, I've, I've seen, seen some of these PS4s exposed, over here. Yeah, I've exposed some of the people out here. <laughs> yeah, like, it's pretty funny. Oh yeah. Hey, whose PS4 is this? And then they raise their hand, and you're like, ah. <laughs> think about that before you take <laughs> Yo, your PS4 <laughs> to your local. <laughs> yeah, think about that. Yeah. Degenerates. <laughs> Ooh. Yo, she is fast, dude. Oh, the last hit. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Gallo is right at home with this character. Yeah, we were just Second talking hit. about that yep. too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is it? No, it's not. Oh, uh, wow, he got the bad axes. axes. <laughs> is that still. Uh, Gosh. It's course will go back course and forward. Course will go back forward. Yeah. Two or one? Two. Two. Yeah. two. Okay. It's been such a long time. Ah. Oh. I I was just talking to him about it too. <laughs> I was just talking about how mid high strings are scary to do on good people. <laughs> Got her. And that's him gauging knowledge. Now he yeah. knows I'm ducking that. Now next time he'll mix up another mid and go for it. Yeah. So one so we were talking about the before uh, because you were talking about strings, right? Yeah. So one of the things you do is that uh, Leo has a down forward one two string that is a mid high. Usually I like to throw out the high because I want to see if people want to get scared or they, they want to take their turn immediately. The second move hit will counter hit them and I'll get a, a combo off it, right? But most patient players will try to duck. Exactly. <laughs> so I tried to I tried to bait him into doing a An tried attack. to take his button or his attack early mm -hmm. because it was low on life. I thought maybe he would have been a little bit uh, a little bit scared to lose the round, so I thought maybe I could get away with that one. What's Kazuya's bound move again? His screw attack is down forward 1 4. Yes. Down forward 1 4. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. Or what, what is the other one? Like, uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. His back 3 plus 4 or something? What is it? I don't even remember. I think yeah. that's like his more of his homing move, I think, right? Yeah, it looks like a. Down homing. forward 1 4 is, one of, is a, a, such a, a great screw. One, yeah. it's, it's, his, his, his most used screw attack. Yeah, sure. his down forward 1 almost goes to the floor. It's fantastic, so. Oh, that's mid? The it's two. High. The, the kick that I Oh, hit. I'm playing on outside box. You're playing outside? <laughs> you, oh, you, just you messed me up his buttons, dude. You saw me change the buttons? Who, play, who plays? <laughs> He's over here pressing buttons. Nothing's who playing out. Nothing's coming out. What the, who plays this We way? were just talking about how I played on American Cats. Yo. Really? Fire, you acting like you never played on American Cat before. Come on, man. Bro. Oh, Oof. oh! You playing the far outside? Outside box. Look at that! Oh, <laughs> Good lord! What did I did I say that correctly? Yeah, yeah. This is the worst. <laughs> this this is absolutely. He's, he's gonna request a rematch. Can, oh can, man! Can you explain what outside box means? Yes. So a lot of sticks have eight buttons on them, right? Yeah. That's uh, not usually the case for a lot of arcade cabinets. Usually arcade cabinets have six buttons. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, we got, we got to switch. We got to switch the buttons. Right? Usually yeah, arcade yeah, yeah, yeah. cabinets have six <laughs> buttons for yeah, to he, he, most. He's, games. he's the only one that doesn't play with the first four. Yes. Basically, so the, the, it, what so do you mean here? if you look four, at an arcade yeah. stick, usually there's eight buttons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Inside uh, box means the no, first you hit rematch. set oh, of three. Can, can you set it here? Yeah. No, you, can you just can't. go to options. You can't set here. Oh, you can. Go yes. Go to options. Oh yeah, that's right. You can. Yeah. Maybe. Outside box means the the outside. Six. So the outside six is actually they're even. They go straight down, but the inside six have the first two buttons a little bit lower than the other uh, other four buttons. I personally there like we go. the outside because I grew up on arcade cabinets at Camelot. Oh, okay, you can't hit between that. Oh. Oof. Woo. Oh, Oy, second hit, classic. Oi! Oh, you hit my balls. Like okay. Round <laughs> two. Fight. Oh. Bow and arrow. 
Word? Mad I'm all in minus two. Good, I'm good. only minus two. Yeah. I'll do whatever I want. That's <laughs> minus two to a 10 frame throw. This is what uh, Gala was talking about when he said all the games that you can play with Party Crasher. Being negative does not mean your turn is over. Woo. Oh, that's hollow pencil. Who is that? Ooh. Good job, good job. <laughs> no, but like, it, it's refreshing to see Julia back to you, honestly, because like back then, like the Changs were like magic fours, yeah, four 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 <laughs> four four one or or four four two, uh, one one one. But yeah, she. The, the tools that they gave her on later iterations is now, you know, she can use 441 a lot more. Yes. The the um, the turnarounds and the follow-ups. Yes. And mm -hmm. she's quick, the mobility. So they gave her so many fun tools, man. And, and she, you you make her look really good. Man. Yeah. Like one thing I miss about old Julia though mm -hmm. is her 441 used to knock down. That is mad cheap. That's <laughs> mad. If they had kept that in the game, a 12 frame mid knockdown. Yeah, I'd have been, <laughs> like, bro, that would have been You're so asking good. for way too much. This character's <laughs> super good. Yeah. No, but it's, she only gets nerfed. She only gets nerfed. Every iteration, she's been nerfed. And nerfed? This character's so good. She's hella nerfed. She's, she's so, so good. <laughs> she's so nerfed. I love, I said, when I said I she's love strong. playing she's Julia, strong. it's because I, I'm playing her right now. I'm learning her, and she's an incredibly fun character. Mm. But I don't have the fluidness that you saw from Gallo. Gallo is moving between all of his moves. He's wind rolling. He's constantly stopping strings early to go for quick lows and stuff like that. So that's what makes him a very good Julia yeah. player. Yeah. And uh, but she's super fun. You can play her in a bunch of different ways. We were just talking very about our differences. Yes, very versatile. I play her as a grappler style character because she has a one, a two, and a one plus two break throws. Uh, a lot of other people usually go for like a poking style because she has a lot of safe, quick mids. You're talking about party crasher, shotgun, yep. very good mids. Uh, you know, you can play her however you want. Really, she's got so many great tools. So uh, guys, thank you guys so much for uh, showing everybody. Uh, Basics of uh, Tekken 7, yeah. you know, I mean, there's so much to learn in this game. Right. Uh, I would have to say, without a doubt, this is probably the hypest game and most of the majors out right now. If, if you hear a lot of loud noises, a lot of cheering, just organic hype, this is the game that's doing it right Absolutely. now in every local scene. So um, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to see more Tekken 7 action, make sure you check out the Tekken World Tour. Uh, this game is being played globally. It's a freaking awesome, awesome ordeal. And uh, you get to see who the best players are in, around the world. So we're going to move on to uh, the last segment, which is Street Fighter V. Last shout-out to these gentlemen. Appreciate Thanks for again. Thank yep. you very Thanks much. For having us. Thanks we'll for see having you us. next time.